Jessica Aro, welcome to the Mother Time Podcast. Thank you so much. It's such an honor. Jessica, it's great to hear from you. Um, you know, the first thing I wanted to ask you was um, with the with the news that the Mueller report may be coming. I mean, do you have in, in the next couple of weeks, do you have any thoughts on on that? Oh, I'm so looking forward to it, just like I've been looking forward to all, all of the previous ones. And I read that it might be out, you know, at least some version of it in a couple of weeks. And I would really hope that it would um, show some clear evidence of how Trump is not exonerated. So I'm really looking forward, for example, the counterintelligence parts. And yeah, I'm just, you know, very enthusiastic about it. I mean, <laughs> publish it already. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it after the last two. I mean, you, you uh, you're on the kind of the front lines of this whole thing, but um, I, I can tell you just living here in the middle of this, this nightmare is, um, I mean, I, I would give anything to be take a vacation in Finland or Switzerland. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I will. We are nearby um, um, Russia and we have some issues coming from there, but you know, it's much better the political climate than yours at the moment. Jessica, what did you think when you heard that the bar letter had come out, the summary that wasn't the Mueller report? Uh, mm. I was surprised. I, I was surprised. How is it even possible? Like uh, there is um, 300 plus pages report, you know, which the whole world basically is looking forward to. And then uh, uh, justice minister, minister who is politically appointed, gets to see it first and to make, you know, um, a summary of it. Why? Like, we were not looking forward to see any summaries. We were looking forward for the whole report. Exactly. Um, now, for everyone who's listening, the way the reason I wanted to interview you was, of course, uh, you are uh, an expert in Kremlin disinformation. But the way a lot of us in America have come to find out about you is, could you tell people what happened with the award that you received from our State Department? Yeah, of course. It's so absurd, you know. So January, um, late, you know, around 25th January this year, I was informed, I was so happy to be informed that I was selected as finalist of International Women of Courage Award. And I would be awarded with that prestigious award, which is meant for um, all international women who have done something very valuable in their communities and often paid a very high price for it. And it's presented by the U.S. State Department. And it's, it was like so, you know, beautiful thing because I have done this countering disinformation uh, for so many years and I have become target of, you know, serious crimes for that as well. So I was just so, you know, touched. And then, you know, we started to handle the logistics and all that with the Embassy of Helsinki. Um, and I even, you know, canceled some of my previous speaking engagements because I was also awarded with a program um, along with the award in the States. But then all of a sudden, after um, the State Department wanted to see my social media handles, um, they told me, like they didn't give any documents they just told me that i the award is cancelled i won't get the award and this was like eight days before i was supposed to travel to washington dc wow <laughs> and the next thing the next thing uh, i read the foreign policy and it said that um it was due to my criticism against trump on twitter the reason why the award had been taken away from me it's so crazy <laughs> the the state department did they did they tell you that or did they they just gave a another reason right a false they reason didn't, yeah they didn't give any official um explanation any you know paper um so we with my lawyer we made a plea for information like a request for information and we asked you know uh, what's the basis of this uh, cancellation who did it uh, and why is it not told to me officially? And we left it uh, to the embassy, but we have still not received any answer. So, I see. Is that typical to ask for someone's social media handles when receiving uh, a word? I, I honestly don't know. 
Uh, yeah, uh, well, me neither, you know, because I do so many conferences all the time. So sometimes these conference organizers, um, they ask for your social media handles to print them on their printed programs, you know, about the speakers, the speaker bios, and then, you know, here are also the speaker uh, social media accounts if you want to follow them. So I really thought that it was for that. Yeah, but yeah, I guess it wasn't because you know uh, it went to a totally different purpose. I guess I won't be receiving any awards anytime soon if you uh, ever <laughs> don't. <laughs> yeah, trust me on that, Jessica. <laughs> and I've I've had my <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so... you know, I have to tell you, it's like citizen duty to criticize. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the people in power. And, and did you know in, in Finland, ninety-one percent of females. Uh, are critical uh, towards Trump. Ninety-one really? percent. Yeah, yeah, and eighty-six percent of you know all genders. So uh, there you go. You know. Another reason <laughs> I, I it just sounds like a much more sane country. I, I seriously, <laughs> if I can just, I just need a one of those little language courses. And I've actually been to Finland <laughs> twice. Um, oh really? But just in the airport, uh, um, stayed overnight on the you know. But it was great. I mean, just a small. Yeah. Ex 36 hours and I was like this is beautiful um yeah. of course that was that was before Trump <laughs> um so when when you yeah I know One thing, <laughs> I'm so sorry for you no I'm sorry no yeah 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 I'm no so I sorry. mean I am you know sorry and you know yeah. it's it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's tragic I'm sorry no no Jessica it is funny I mean I work mostly <laughs> as an entertainer like that's like you said, citizens have to speak out. Well, that's why I started doing this. I, I was doing stand-up comedy and this and that. And uh, anyway, I was, when this whole thing happened, that's why, yeah. And I laugh every day. Yeah. I actually wake up, yeah. I, I wake up laughing. Um, yeah, it, it really, <laughs> you really have to laugh. Because uh, if you don't, you know. Oh, I mean, look, you just look at him. Like, I, I don't want yeah. this whole thing. Yeah, I know. Um, how, how, how isn't his Twitter account already, you know, done <laughs> like many years ago? It's yeah. so much of its content. It's considered as hate speech in many European countries. Yeah. 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 Europe is much more, you know, that that's one thing we've learned is America's free speech laws, which we are, we all value, but there's, we've learned that the other side, it's that sometimes, uh, I don't know. Maybe there, maybe maybe social media companies have more of a responsibility to think about that, like they do in yeah. Europe. Yeah. W when you found out that you didn't get that award, uh, or when they had rescinded the award, I mean, what what was your first thought? I was um, shocked, and I even cried. It was so horrible. It really felt like some kind of um, discrimination, you know. Yeah. Um, over opinion so uh, that kind of experiences are quite pro profound feelings and they hurt you in so many levels and i also thought that it's you know not just my award taken away but also you know freedom of speech taken away and in a way diminishing the value of this honored really excellent award which encourages so many women who have gone through a lot and i was also you know so sad because the program was supposed to be really great and i was supposed to be meeting these nine other excellent ladies who have done so you know i didn't know at that time who they would be but um after reading about the previous i uh i was so excited so yeah it was horrible yeah and i, I want to say like you sent me um that that report from, I think it was the, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee on, on your case. And so I just want to say to my listeners, this was, I mean, yes, receiving an award is big, but this wasn't just an award. They had a whole, you know, itinerary. Uh, it was a very big deal and meeting important people. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then so just to take it away at the last minute is crazy. Yeah, horrible. Um, and they gave no reason. It was just whatever officially no no yeah. not, no I, i'm still looking forward you know maybe one day they will or yeah. maybe not probably not. well so so if i understand it there we're investigating that the senate foreign relations committee and bob menendez yeah they're looking at yeah 
So maybe we'll get some kind of answer about that. Yeah, they referred the case to the inspector general uh, of the State Department. So I hope that he will take the case and then look even more deeper, you know, and maybe find out who gave, the, who was the mystery guy or girl who gave the secret order to, you know, wipe me off the lists. I would really look forward to see uh, who that is. You know, Jessica, I was just thinking about a minute ago when we were both laughing and it really is like, just to go back to that, like, I, I mean, are we, I know, like, how much of a joke is America right now? I mean that seriously. Like, you, no, it's fine. Like my listeners, they get it. Like, are we a total joke, or do people get that it's not all, all of us? Uh, people get that. People yeah. really get get that. Um, right. But you know, just show Trump's face to any Finn, <laughs> <laughs> and you know they will just you know, it's just too much. You know, right. I. I for, for example, you know, they were showing and reading some of his statements um, uh, in the beginning to some, you know, these Finnish uh, veterans and, you know, pensioners and, you know, this really, we are the most moderate and the most, you know, happy people uh -huh. uh, uh, in the world. And reading that horrible hate speech just put out, you know, shocking reactions to people's faces. It's horrible. Right. It's really, you know... But we are looking forward. Someday it will end. It has to end. Right. It will. Um, it, right. In, in your country or in other parts, I mean, could a candidate, let's say, running in your country, in Finland, could they say those things? Or is there actual repercut laws against campaigning the way Trump did? Uh, hmm. Well, I would um, equate this case, for example, one populist um um, right-wing politician, very anti-immigrant politician, and he said very horrible things. I cannot actually, you know, repeat those things sure. about how Islam is, you know, and then really dirty words, religion. Sure. And um, he got convicted for it. I see. But of course, you know, he used it as a fuel uh, within the supporters. So yeah, you do get, you know, convictions. And we have other uh, smaller politicians who also got convictions for hate speech. So I was, yeah, I was, I mean, like, and to be clear to everybody, like I'm like most Americans, I'm a very extreme on the free speech side. And I, and I get that in our, our country, hate speech is protected, but I was just curious from the, the European perspective. Um, and Scandinavia. Yeah, it's strict. Compared to you guys, it's really strict. Yeah. And, and that's how it should be seriously. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just you know you look at this guy on TV sometimes, and in um, where you live, or I know right now you're in Switzerland. Do does the does the rest of the world understand how a very a rigged system led to this happening? That he was not even elected by a popular vote. Do they do people know yeah. that? Yes, they do. Yes, people know. Yeah, they of know. course. Okay. Yeah, and they wonder, you know, okay, so what's the deal here? But the um, they also understand, um, you know, the Russian troll topic. And we know that, you know, the Russian trolls helped him a lot. And uh, they kind of supported him and they made all those horrible campaigns against Hillary Clinton. And th there were these military um, intelligence guys and hackers who broke into, you know, Democrats' systems. So... Finns, I would say they also know a lot about that. So, yeah, I think it's a much more highly educated population. That's been my um, my my impression over the years, and I, I think that's one of the problems in this country is just there's just just public education is not prized in a way that it is where in your country, um, right? And this is the results, unfortunately. Um, mm, yeah, yeah. Could you tell uh, now, just to segue, can you tell people exactly what it is that you do and what you're an expert in? Yeah, so I'm an investigative journalist and I specialize in Russia and information warfare and extremism. And um, I have, for example, earlier in my career, I have investigated Al Qaeda, a social media propaganda already sometimes 10 years ago. And I have always been interested uh, in Russia, I have lived in Russia, I have worked there as a journalist, I've studied there as an exchange student in Moscow, and um, the recent foreign 
half years, I've been investigating especially the digital propaganda spread by, you know, trolls and Kremlin's fake news. And uh, I've been doing a book and I'm all the time traveling and training people into this topic. And um, I also became target of some crimes. So uh, I also then sue these people who uh, come after me. And um, there are uh, some court processes still ongoing and crimes are still ongoing, but this is now how it is. Right. Yeah. You took these people head on. I read every article I could find in our, in our Washington Post, New York Times. Uh, and all this came about because you investigated the Internet Research Agency, correct? Yeah, exactly. And specifically, uh, I started to investigate already in 2014, September, the impact, the influence that the uh, social media Kremlin propaganda trolls, uh, anonymous and fake profiles, what kind of impact do they have in real people? Because we already knew at that time, because the really brave Russian journalists had investigated and infiltrated the actual factory already in 2013. Uh, but then I started to hear reports that the trolls are active in Finland as well and attacking our politicians and, you know, cyber experts and people like that. So then I wanted to know how do they influence in actual real people, Internet users who might not know that they are paid social media trolls, you know, who uh, only pretend to be opinionated citizens. So I started to look into that uh, and I... As part of that investigation, I also went with my colleagues to the troll factory in St. Petersburg. And we found out, for example, uh, this was 2015 February, that uh, at the troll factory, they were already back then recruiting people, uh, like over 10 recruitment ads they had. Of course, the Internet Research Agency didn't say that they were recruiting trolls, but then they said that they are looking for um, social media managers and copywriters whose task it would be to, uh, uh, to uh, write content online, also in English and also in 12 hour shifts and on night shifts. So we called there, we had a really good Russian journalist, uh, a stringer, and we pretended that we want a job. Please, you know, let me know what kind of content do you want me to produce? Um, uh, like commercial or what kind and they told political news so already in 2015 uh, they were doing international operations so wow. yeah and they were also looking for people who can do social um um this search engine optimization so they were meddling with their search results already back then and then uh because they have the stupidest uh, security guard at the factory <laughs> and they also ended up revealing themselves that uh, it's some kind of uh, state security structure you know because you know what happened when we were filming outside the main entrance of the factory um, and taking photos uh, the guard came out and he started to yell you know uh, you have to leave or else I will call the police can't you see that this is uh, regime uh, Zdani and regime Zdani in Russia, they are specially protected by presidential decree uh, buildings that are uh, maybe, you know, police stations, nuclear power plants, you know, military bases. So thank you, God, for letting us know, because before that, there were only rumors that it's, you know, FSB controlled or whatever. So there's that. But yeah, so then I started or continued investigating. We So we made these stories in English and uh, Finish because this was a new phenomenon and everyone needed to know. And we made really detailed work and we had videos, we put them on YouTube and everywhere. And then um, we also interviewed the Russian journalists, really courageous ones who had to work there as trolls. And then um, the troll factory, uh, one of the fake news managers, we also managed to interview. Um, but he was not only uh, lying that there are no trolls working there, but whatever. Uh, then um, uh, I continued with the investigation of the influence. Uh, and I then, pub we published in May 2015, a series of stories, uh, also in English and in Russian, uh, 
uh, in which I basically I listed the troll narratives, the troll techniques, um, memes, videos, YouTube, you know, bots, um, and commenting on um, normal media's comment sections. Also, they were picking up fights uh, and harassing people, discussing at the biggest Russian language conversation forum in Finland. Uh, then they were attacking people. They were calling people names, Russophobes, CIA, you know, telling people they will kill them or, or you know, FSB will kill them. So then the actual influence, it was so um, important finding because I interviewed and, you know, talked with like about 200 different um, people uh, and gathered 200 different stories. Um, and... Uh, when I made summary of it, I found out that they had already had impact in Finnish um, people in a way. For example, that some people had stopped discussing about Russia issues publicly. You know, can you imagine, you know, this, you know, grassroots discussions happening on Twitter or on Facebook or on comment sections was already back then silenced because people told that they were afraid of the trolls who would attack them and start threatening them if they ever, you know, spoke up about Russia or a Kremlin or even brought up facts. So some people even had left social media because they were afraid of the trolls. Also trolls harassed a bloggers already back then. A Russian embassy was really trolling heavily already back then. Um, the Finnish uh, people and spreading, you know, um, you know, people of, um, phot sorry, photos of, you know, corpses, like dead corpses, and blaming, you know, Ukraine uh, of Russia's own aggression on Twitter. Then they were also molding um, Finnish bloggers' tweets and using them uh, to blame Ukraine for the war that um, had started to happen back then, waged by Russia. Yeah, and I also then found out that unfortunately some people then um, because they become influenced by the troll disinformation online they don't know what is true and what is not true anymore uh, for example back then about the situation in ukraine because the trolls were spreading these conspiracy theories and fakes that you know it was us it was nato um, it was the european union who is in, uh, responsible about the ukrainian war and they were blaming, you know, uh, Western leaders as Nazis and fascists and uh, saying that Putin is the best. So then people would start, you know, thinking, you know, what is actually happening in Ukraine? Ukraine I don't know anymore. Then also one impact was the, what, that when some people become subjected to fake news and propaganda, they unfortunately start believing it and then they share it to their own network. So... The trolls have the power to turn actual people into propagandists and useful idiots. Um, but then there was also good news, and that good news was that some people do not become influenced. So some people see that, okay, so here's fake profiles, trolls, you know, fake people uh, spreading fake information. Well, okay, well, that's nothing new, you know, in a way it's only a digital application of what Soviet Union has done and Russia has done already in other medias for uh, decades. So, but um, my concern is the uh, power of the trolls to, you know, agitate conflicts in physical world and agitate hatred. And, you know, sometimes these trolls also, they ev evolved over time and the previously, you know, pro-Kremlin, pro-Russian trolls um, became hateful, uh, really hateful, like agitating hatred. And uh, those are the operations that I'm most worried about and which I have seen also in other countries um, after my own uh, investigations. And yeah, so that's that's what the trolls influence. And I have unfortunately seen them, you know, <laughs> use their powers in many other conflicts and in uh, many other cases. We have learned after my investigations that they have, you know, influenced your elections and they have attacked the um, Brexit. They have lobbied for the Brexit and they have lobbied for uh, Catalonian independence. They have waged uh, conflicts, violent conflicts uh, in Catalonia. Then they have uh, 
Uh, recently, for example, the French um, uh, intelligence services, they are looking into Russian trolls um, fueling violence in the Yellow West protests that are mm. ongoing in Paris at the moment and have been for months or almost. So, yeah, the trolls are really, you know, as I defined them in 2016, a threat to national security. Um, are, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, were you the, are you the first, were you the first reporter to report on the, uh, on this, on the Internet Research Agency or on this phenomenon in general? Or uh, no, these were the Russian journalists who reported about it already in 2013. They infiltrated the factory and they made stories in Russian media. Hmm. But from there uh, to go international, it took a while. And uh, then BuzzFeed made some stories. They had uh, hacked. Uh, documents uh, of the uh, troll factory supervisors and employees, like emails. So they made big story. I believe it was summer 2014. Then um, Guardian, um, some social media producer, gave an interview uh, that the trolls attack their news pieces about Ukraine, and they can have even tens of thousands of troll comments in their Ukraine stories. So that's where I became really interested also. That, okay, so what's the actual influence? Yeah, you know, it's funny, like you joked about their dumb security guard, which was very funny. And then yeah. I read about in, uh, I think it was in Greg Miller's book, The Washington Post Reporter, The Apprentice, about how they they got some, some fool in, in this country to hold a birthday card celebrating the head of the Internet Research Agency in front of the White House. So yeah. it's so it's so funny, but it seems like th none of this would be possible if there weren't just to be nice people who they're just they're not all there. And they yeah. it's like, you know, who, who fall for this? Uh, just that wouldn't mm -hmm. be possible because I. An educated population would just, you know, like you said, they just, oh, you know, I don't believe that. Uh, but some people, I guess, uh, you know, fall for that stuff easier. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. It's so it's easy not, to say yeah. that, you know, we are so well educated, you know, mm. we can, we know all these tricks. No, we don't. Yeah. No, we don't. We already have new tricks that we don't know nothing about yet. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like it's a very, from their perspective, it's a pretty effective form of warfare. It costs almost nothing. And look at the, I mean, he elected our, our president and we still don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We still don't know what's going on right now. Exactly. Um, what, I mean, what, what does Putin want? He want, does he want to just disrupt the Western order? What, what is this whole thing about? Uh, this is a really interesting question. I actually asked this myself. 2014, I had the opportunity to interview a former Putin's um, like insider advisor mm -hmm. called Andrei Ilarionov, who back in mid-2000, um, after working as Putin's uh, financial advisor, um, told publicly that Russia is no longer a democracy, and he moved to uh, the States to become a researcher. And I asked the specific same question. What does Russia want? Why does Russia do information warfare? And he said uh, so well that um, one reason is that it wants to show its might. You know, it's, it, it, because it can do. It's like he compared uh, Putin's Russia uh, with a village bandit that just wants to, you know, um, show its, you know, neighbors was the boss but then there are the political re reasons they want to advance their political agenda and you know that that uh, unfortunately seems to be to break up uh, democracies and break up you know our cohesion and um, fuel you know these um, extremist groups far left and far far right but you have to also see that this is not a new thing. Like this is already dating back to former Soviet Union times. So now it's just really efficient, just like you said. You know, yeah. it doesn't cost much. Yeah, yeah. I've read like they're. I don't know where they rank in terms of economic power, but it's not anywhere near. So they use the tools that were available, and it um, 
I guess you maybe you don't need a big army now because you um, yeah. can see what happened here. Um, yeah, exactly. Now, when, when you did this report, I mean, these people came after you, correct? Mm. Mm. Yes. And I read about it, and I'm not even going to repeat any of that stuff because it was, it was too, it's just, I don't want to, but uh, they really play hardball, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, just stating the obvious, I mean, what is the matter with these people? Like, I, I, it was just shocking to read some of those things that happened to you. Uh, mm. Yeah, well, um, some of them work with um, Putin's think tank uh, mm. called Russian Institute of Strategic Studies, which happens to be the same um, institute that, according to American security services, designed and planned this whole troll and fake news operation against your elections. So some of them have, let's say, professional interest in embarrassing me and silencing me and basically trying to destroy me. And then some probably get paid. And then some are agitated uh, into it. And the amount of people who are like real people who have been uh, mobilized to hate me and agitated to think that I am a horrible enemy, I am drug user, I am schizophrenic, I am, you know, threat to Finnish national security, I am NATO lobbyist and NATO troll, I am USA propagandist. It's massive. I have my former teenage friends uh, who sent me death threats and who I have to report to the police, seriously. Like, they have the power, these fake news against me have the po power to turn even my own former friends into, you know, my enemies. It's so distressing. And um, I cannot comment some of the stuff related to the crimes sure. because some of it will still be, you know, <clears throat> dealt with in the appeals court. Uh, but, yeah, so... I will just walk you through what happened. Basically, just some days after I published my um, crowdsourced investigation in 2014, in which I asked people to tell their experiences and knowledge about the trolls and their activities, um, I became myself target of fake news. So um, there were over 10 Russian fake news being spread, that, uh, claiming that I am not a journalist all, at all and that I work for NATO and US Baltic security services, and then that I engage in criminal activities. So I was framed as some kind of foreign spy, and also my contact information was published. And that was a problem because then people who read the news, the fake news about me, they believed it's true, and they started to contact me. <clears throat> Sorry, I, um, I back then received even from Ukrainian number, some shooting phone call. I received just wishes for me to go to jail, you know, for my crimes, just, you know, insults. But, you know, that's only the beginning. And after that, it uh, evolved into um, harassment on social media groups, you know, trolls and actual people joining their forces to um, wish for me to die and crowd stalking um, my public appearances, tearing down everything I say, um, sending disinformation about me to 263 of my colleagues, uh, claiming to have me to done things that I never did, uh, and then also, you know, starting a series of um, really nasty stories. Uh, mm. Just leaving me no human um, value at all. So that was then also part of it has been in court, but part of not. Yeah, it was, it was good to see that there's recourse and we're starting to get that here. In other words, I'm sure you saw that Alex Jones, who is our version of, of a, um, a certified dangerous nut. Now he's being held accountable. And I don't know if you saw any of his deposition, but it's amazing how the courage drains out of these people now, now he's saying that he's sick, that it was all a joke. Um, so I guess maybe courts may be the way to hold people accountable. 
uh, like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's horrible what he has done. Yeah, and and um, it's you know unacceptable. All of this is unacceptable. But you know the uh, really scary thing is uh, is that many of these um, disinformation, you know, horrible conspiracy theorists, social media conspiracy theorists, they are connected like these pro Kremlin heavyweight um, fake news masterminds, they are connected and they share uh, and reshare uh, content. And <clears throat> there are many of them uh, also, for example, you know, uh, in Finland, they are spreading stuff from Alex Jones in force. And, you know, <laughs> they radicalize each other, you know, using synergy. Yeah, that's that seems to be the. Uh, oh, and by the way, I want to thank you again uh, for. I know I know you're getting over a little flu, so that means a lot to us that you would take the time to talk to us. Uh, it's my you, pleasure, seriously. <laughs> I'm yeah. so excited. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Podcasting is fun. Uh, this is this is a good time. Um, uh, Putin yeah. is not a good time, but Mueller time is a good time. That's what I. <laughs> that's what I. <laughs> you know, Kremlin disinformation is not fun. But no. Nope. Uh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, no, I, I know you were you said you were in Switzerland. Are you uh, are you doing work there? Or can you tell us what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. So here um, is now starting radio days. It's a convent or conference for radio, basically radio journalists and CEOs and media people. And there's a lot of people here. It's a big thing, really big thing. So there will be a lot of workshops and speaking events. And I will be speaking in three different um, occasions here. So tomorrow, on Monday, on Tuesday. So <clears throat> I will discuss about and educate about Kremlin trolls and fake news as security threat. You know, and that, that sounds fantastic. If I knew, I would yeah. have uh, would have loved to have checked that out. Um, maybe that, do they have a live stream or any anything we can watch? Yeah, yeah. I Yes, some of the program has it will be streamed. I just read it. I was thinking before about the sort of the bumbling idiocy of Putin and of Trump. They so these Kremlin trolls attack you, but all it did in effect was give you a bigger platform. Whereas, and then Trump takes your award away, or whoever it was, Pompeo, and now I'm now I know who you are. I mean, there mm. is a very comic element to this. If they had just done nothing, I, I might not know you. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's why oh, I hope I, myself. I yeah. Oh, no, you're saying. I, no, but I, I agree, you know, and I have tried to actually strategically um, operate in a manner that I um, make these operations backfire mm. back on them. So, for example, when they started to smear me already in the beginning as CIA and whatever, and I found this fake news in Russian media, uh, all that did was it actually, you know, of course it hurt me, you know, seeing these lies. But um, in regard to my work, I realized, oh, my God, this troll topic must be a serious topic and much bigger than I originally thought, because if it wasn't important, they wouldn't put so much effort in smearing me. So they also, you know, ended up, you know, showing uh, how important this is. I maybe wouldn't have realized, but yeah, but right. I still, you know, it's still, you know, even though I try to look at the, you know, the bright side, but still this is a serious crimes. They were like aggravated crimes and they have caused so much trouble in, in my life. So I cannot, you know. Only of think of you know these good things. I just try and turn you know them into something good and valuable. Well, what you said about friends, and again, um, you know, I know you can't talk about all this, but just actual friends kind of turning on you—that's that's shocking to me. I mean, I'm just thinking if that happened to me, childhood mm. friends. I mean, that's that's uh, I don't know. I can't imagine that. Yeah, and then you also see how deep this brainwashing is. You know, even people who know you after reading one or X, Y, Z amount of fake news stories about you, they want to kill you after that. Like, excuse me, what happened? I'm sorry, this is so disturbing. Right. But also, <clears throat> I have to tell you about this mobilizing of people. Um, 
So you would expect that in, you know, in a good justice country, you know, like in Finland, which is amongst the most safest ones, you would have, um, if you have to go to court ever, um, it would be peaceful. Well, uh, guess what happened? So last June, uh, when my uh, trials were about to start, uh, this pro Kremlin fake news extremists started to use YouTube uh, very actively to agitate people to come protest um, at the courthouse. So they ended up uh, and also to film me and to accuse me of all this shit, meaning that their leader was going to court and to uh, write everything to social media that I lie on in court. And what they ended up, you know, causing in the court was really disturbing because there were some 20, 30 activists uh, who were yelling there, who were streaming filth from the hallways, who were um, hinting that me and one of my witnesses have an inappropriate relationship and that we have maybe used drugs together. Uh, <clears throat> they were pushing professional journalists trying to cover. They were saying nasty things like mental violence things to journalists. So, like, I mean, what's happening? Can't we have just like a peaceful court session here? Yeah. It's so alarming. It's like, this is what I would call hybrid warfare yeah. in action. Yeah. I wonder about with, with Putin sometimes. I, there's only one book that I've, the, I think it's called A Man Without a Face. And I've been, I've been reading that. But there's not, I don't know, there's not a huge amount of information on him. Like, but I wonder sometimes if he isn't just... Um, I understand he has he's angry about what happened with the Soviet Union, but it also just bears the hallmarks of, of someone who just wants chaos and maybe yeah. a psychopath. I you know I, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that's what this whole thing is about. It's just about his own psyche. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, and think about it. You know, he has all this money that he has robbed from the Russian people mm -hmm. and hidden somewhere in the West, where he you know also <clears throat> secretly wants to hang so much, and then he uses this, you know, probably his own money even, he invests into these, you know, troll factories because he just loves it so much. <laughs> you know, this is just so, it, it really makes me sick. You know, yeah. think about it, the fact that they closed down Amnesty International Human Rights, you know, organization, a citizen organization in Moscow for being a foreign agent, but they still let troll factory operate in St. Petersburg. Like, what's up with that? Like, that really shows you the international, you know, priorities of um, modern Russia. It's also fascinating how, and then, um, and I know you're, uh, I know you probably don't have too much time, so I just have a couple more questions, but uh, I, it's fascinating how the rhetoric that comes out of Donald Trump and Putin is so similar. It's the whole thing when, when Trump, the way he launched his whole career, was saying that our president, Barack Obama, was not born here. He's not one of us. It's a whole wink thing. It's the same thing. Uh, you're not, something's not right. You're not one of us. That's when they call you a foreign agent. It's the same thing. It, it's, it's something that, that, that's exactly the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And Trump either willingly or just that's how he thinks is, is a mirror. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. What do you think really happened with Trump and Putin? I mean, what do you think is the real the relationship, uh, in your mm. opinion? Well, to me, it looks like that um, Trump has already been compromised mm. uh, because of his business deals and because of his loans from the Russians uh, for the Trump Tower already like, I don't know, decades ago. Mm. So he's already, you know, up to his neck in debt for some Russians. And yeah, that's already, that says enough, you know, yeah, yeah. it's already, you know, it's already <laughs> there. Right. When they that... have you financially, then they have you all together. Right. That's as much as, as, as me doing the Mueller time show and wanting to know about the Mueller report. This is all in plain view. He wanted to build a Moscow tower. They own him. They buy mm -hmm. his condos like this. Mm -hmm. He should have been impeached for this already. Like, Forget about any kind of comp compromise. It's, it's, it's in the paper. Yeah, uh, exactly. Hey, can you please also tell your view about yeah. the uh, Mueller report, please? 
the upcoming. Oh, the upcoming. What do you think about you know? Oh, what do I think? Hustle about you know bar uh, summary and all this. I like this. Now you're interviewing me. That's good. Yeah. I, I actually I actually do like that when people do that because uh it it just makes it easier on me. Uh, what do I think? <laughs> well, you know it's funny that when the bar summary came out and people were asking me weird questions like was I going to change the name of my show or is this the last show? I was like, no, like what do I think is in the report? Uh, 400 pages. I mean a lot. I think there's a lot in there. I'm just concerned that they're going to try to, to hide it. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to imagine. I, I, it's like Robert Mueller didn't spend two years with the best prosecutors in this country to just produce Something big happened. I just don't know what it is. That's how I'll answer that question. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I can't wait. Uh, but again, it's like the American people have to force this thing because they're clearly going to try to hide it. So we mm -hmm. need to be out there doing what we do, demonstrating. Because uh, already Barr's letter was fake. And I mean, that just the whole thing was just, it's shady. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, you know. Um, I'm sure I'll do a special episode when that when that happens. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Looking I mean, to it. yeah, looking, looking forward to it. And but then, what's um, in your opinion the most interesting finding? You know that Mueller has already made that that we know about publicly. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a good question. You know, it's hard because so much of this is public. Like even outside of Mueller, it's like, uh, like. When I found out that he was trying to build a Moscow tower, I said, oh, this is it. This is the thing that, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Mueller indicted everybody up until their campaign manager. When, when he mm -hmm. indicted Paul Manafort, I said, what more do you need? Is, it was the campaign manager. Uh, you know what? I will answer your question. Finding out that Paul Manafort and his uh, Rick Gates gave confidential polling data to Konstantin Kalimnik, uh, again, a Russian intelligence operative, or if you want to be whatever, charitable, connected. I mean, that that should blow everyone's mind, no? Yeah. <laughs> he gave yeah, it to him. It and then did, the guy got yeah. on a plane. Yeah, it did, right? Like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> and still, people are like, what? I, what more do you need? The, a television commercial with Trump saying, you know, I did it? <laughs> And he did that too. He got on TV yeah. and said, "We well, Russia, we well, are you, if you're listening." Uh, yeah, yeah, that that's He's pretty so much it. He's so deep in their pockets. He's so deep in their pockets. You yeah. just can't help it. Uh, you know. It, and you well, know, he's. I want to say one thing. Yeah, I, you of know, course. rarely go to you know into people's personalities, but now I really have to do because it's a perfect opportunity, and it's uh. Trump. Uh, his personality seems to be such that um, the Russian security services really love to exploit because mm -hmm. he loves the attention. He does anything for money, you know. Yeah. He wants attention. And these Russians, they have the ten tendency to start, you know, providing support for anyone who wants to um, um, win any elections, even the yeah. local politicians. So he's like the perfect guy oh jessica how could i forget the helsinki summit of course oh yeah oh that too <laughs> yeah exactly i know there's gonna be a, yeah, there's gonna be a great movie about this someday right. <laughs> you know the white house made a coin to commemorate that and i bought it because it's a part of history it's tr the trump putin coin I, you know no, it's all, no, it's all slumped no, over. No. i know I know. <laughs> I never thought I'd enjoy being laughed at it's so not... much. <laughs> it really is funny. That's horrible. That's yeah. too much. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, I just have two more questions. I, you're Jessica. You're writing a book. Can you tell us about the book you're doing? Um, yeah, of course. So, um, it's a really exciting uh, collection of um, people, human interest stories of. Uh, individuals in both Europe and in the U.S. 
who became targets of heavyweight smearing and harassment and active measures campaigns coming from the Kremlin after they voiced out their information or made human rights activism or made business with Russia. So, yes, and then they really some of the outcomes, what happened to these people are really tragic because some of these operations unfortunately work. Um, but yeah, so it's um, quite special. And when you read it, it's like uh, you wish it wasn't true, but all of it is documented and true. So it's like real life agent stories, many of them in one book. And it's coming out pretty soon, correct? Uh, the, yeah, the Finnish the version will be out next fall and hopefully the English one after that sometime oh, I thought, soon. I wasn't sure if you said the finished or the Finnish. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, um, yeah, the same, same, yeah. Finnish and Finnish, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the only other thing I really want to ask was, uh, what do you think, what does the what does the world have to do as a collective to stop Russian disinformation? What do we all, what can we all do? Mm. First, we need to uh, help the ones who are the most vulnerable to this. It's very tricky because sometimes and often these people who are most vulnerable, they don't even realize they have been brainwashed and they might, you know, become upset. For example, you know, the guys on internet uh, who spread, you know, this horrible fake news. And when you tell them that, you know, please, um, this is wrong and these facts are not right, they sometimes become aggressive. But this is what we really need. We need to build community, you know, try to uh, gain the trust of these people who, for some reason, lost all their trust in, for example, the journalists and media and uh, societies. And so, yeah, so if you see like friends spreading fake news, please ask him or her, you know, what's up and are you okay? And, you know, this is fake and, you know, uh, it's fake because this and that. And uh, so that's one thing. And then, well, basically um, what I've been doing the latest four and a half years, I have been just running around and telling the stories because there are still so many people who don't even know that this is happening. Because, you know, this is just like too much uh, for some people. Um, it's not a nice idea to think that there is a country or a regime uh, of a big country that wants to, you know, spread hatred and fuel conflicts mm. and destroy democracies of neighboring countries or faraway countries. But it's a fact and, you know, spreading awareness like this, you know, your podcast is one, one really right. uh, important thing. Thank yeah. you for doing. No, thank you. Um, is there anything else you wanted to, I don't know, tell our audience that you're uh, promoting or just something, anything on your mind or um, anything at all? Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'd like to promote your show, you know. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So we'll listen to the next Mueller time, you know, this is the best thing, you know, at the pod world at the moment. And, you know, I'm looking forward to your pods as well. And then also the findings that you will tell to the public. This is my favorite it. topic. And, you know, Mueller is one of my personal idols. He's so, you know, he does it so well, you know, investigate and prosecute. Yes, please. These Russian trolls need to go to jail. <laughs> you know, I'm in one way, I am like Trump. My ego is just as susceptible to flattery. So, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, Jessica, it's been great having you. And uh, I really hope we can do this again uh, uh, soon. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. All right. Talk to you soon.